Hi guys, welcome to the last session on modulus. Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about plotting modulus graphs or graphs of modulus. Now it's not going to be a long video because uh, as far as the exams that I'm trying to target or you guys are trying to target, uh, definitely J is not a part of those exams. So I'm not going to go too in depth about this theory, but I'm going to make some simple rules so, so that you can follow and get the answers uh, without wasting time in the exam. Okay, so let's start our journey. Well, that's about me. I'm sure you guys all know me by now. So we'll talk about first the basic graph of mod X. Now the basic graph of mod X, I'm sure all of you know, but this is how the graph looks like. So now let us understand how did we get this graph? And this is important for us because we need to know how the graph has been drawn. So when you look at mod X, this definition as per maths is, this will be written as X. If X is greater than or equal to zero, this will be written as minus X. If X is less than zero, this is the definition. So what happens by this is, in the region of x greater than 0, that is in this region, if you notice this region, x greater than 0, your equation becomes y equal to x. And this is the graph of y equal to x. That's how you got this. Only the right side part. Then if you look at the other region, x is less than 0, which is this region. In this region, your answer is minus x, which means your graph is y equal to minus x which is the left hand part. Actually, that is the logic why you get a V shaped graph. This understanding of drawing this basic graph is important because the same logic we're going to continue forward in a slightly more uh, complex scenario. Okay, I hope this is clear. So let's move on and take a look at uh, what happens when there are two variables in your graph. Okay, so we have x plus y and x minus y. This is the standard format. Now, what happens when you when when you have such two modulus? And remember, there are two variables here, x and y. It's not a single variable x. So then you once again have to do your basic thing. But here you want to draw your boundary lines. It's not boundary point anymore. You're going to draw your boundary line. Your first line will be to equate x plus y equal to zero, which gives you the line x equal to minus y. So here the concept is the same. You are finding boundaries, but because normally we have one variable and a constant, you get a point x equal to something. Here you have two variables. So x equal to minus y, you get a line. Similarly, you draw the second boundary line also which gives you x equal to y. So we divided our xy plane, the Cartesian plane into four regions. What are the four regions? You can see like before, this is your region one. This entire thing is your region one. This entire thing will be your region two, region three, and similarly region four. This is how the entire 2D space. See, remember guys, till now we are talking about a number line. Number line is one dimensional, unidimensional. Hence, we had points. Now, because we are dealing with X and Y, which is a, which is a two-dimensional space, we are talking about area and regions. So the concept is still the same. We are just applying it to an extra dimension. That's it. So these are the four regions. Now, if you look at the first region, you can take any one point X comma Y from this region. The concept remains the same. Take any one point, substitute in this two points and see what happens to the first modulus and the second modulus. Let us take, let us say I take the point two comma three. You can see that the first modulus is positive and uh, two comma three, sorry, two comma three will not be here. I will take three comma one, three comma one is in this point, in this region. So the first modulus will be positive and the second modulus will be also positive. So if both of them are positive, I can straight away write my uh, equation without the modulus. This is how you break the modulus, right? So you'll get it as two X and Y gets canceled, which gives you X equal to five. So you will draw the line X equal to five only in the region one. Similarly, you go to the region two. If you look at region two, take a point, any point in the region two, let's say I take this point on the Y axis. What is this point? Zero comma three. Let us say, if I take a 0, 3, then you'll see that this is positive, but this is negative. 
So the first one will be written as it is, but the second one, if you notice, the second one, the signs have changed. So you will be getting your equation in the second region like this, y equal to five. So to be very precise, this, this point should be lying on this line over here. So this small mismatch in my diagram. I hope you guys forgive me for that. So ideally this line should be, in fact, this should be passing like this through this point. It will be a perfect square. Uh, in uh, that's the diagram you're going to get when you continue in your region three and also in your region four. Now, if you notice this square has the length of 10 units. Okay. Because what is this line? This line is X equal to five, which means the point here is going to be five comma five because this point has to lie on X equal to Y. So it is five comma five. Similarly, this point will be five comma minus five. So your Y coordinate is changing from plus five to minus five in a vertical line. So the distance is 10 units and it is going to be a perfect square. This way you will be getting the area of the square as hundred. This is the way in which you plot your graph. Now the beauty is once you understand the concept, you don't have to waste your time drawing it every time. Let's look at some, uh, you know, basic ways in which the graphs can give, and then we'll derive a formula, not derive. Actually, we will buy had a formula to, you know, to save your time. Let's look at the second case. So if you remember previously, there were no coefficients of X and Y, it was plain simple. This is the second model where you have some coefficients of, of X and Y, but the point that you have to keep in mind is the coefficient of X is the same in both the modulus. Coefficient of Y is the same, the numerical value, just that there is a negative sign in place of a positive. So the format here is AX plus BY. And remember always it is a plus in between plus AX minus BY. This is the format equal to K. In this format, the idea is again the same. You have to draw your boundary lines. And this time, if you, if you draw your boundary lines, your boundary lines will be two X equal to minus five Y and two X equal to five Y. And which means your boundary lines will be these. This is the first boundary line. And this will be the second boundary line. And if you do the same concept that I did in the four regions, this time, instead of getting a square, you will get a rectangle. You will get a rectangle and you can find the points, the, the corner points in the rectangle, because you know, this line, this line is supposed to be two X equal to three Y. And you know, this line, when you, when you try to substitute or when you try to simplify the equation in the first region, you will see both modulus are positive. So you will get two X plus five Y plus two X minus five Y equal to 10. This Y gets canceled. So you'll get X equal to 10 by four, which is 2.5. So X is 2.5, which means you can find the coordinate of Y also. So you can get all the points. You can get all the sides. I'm not getting into. Uh, what is the area or the calculation of, a, of the area? Because the concept now, you know, but let's go ahead and try to look at, is there a direct formula for me to get an answer in both the cases? So let's take a look at it. So here the area will be two into five. Uh, the length will be uh, five and uh, the width will be two, but let's look at the formula for this. So if you, this is the master formula guys, this is your master formula. If you have it in the form of AX plus BY, plus AX minus BY is equal to K. Then you can straight away say the area formed by the graph, the closed figure, which is a rectangle will be K square by AB. The special case is what we saw where A and B are one. If A and B are same, and that is equal to one, then you will be getting a square and this formula will become K square, which is the first case that we have seen the square figure, but the general formula is K square by AB. Now, normally in your DU JAT or IPM exams, or even CAT, some of you are preparing for CAT, the, the level of questions come up to this format, AX plus BY and AX minus BY. However, there is a more general case, which we will, will not get into it. But the idea is what if you have all coefficients different, what happens to the graph? Now in this video, I will not talk about the calculation of the area or the derivation of the formula or the formula itself per se, because it's not required for your exam. However, I will leave this video with an idea of how the graph will look. The graph will look something like this. The concept is still the same. 
you will start with ax equal to minus by and cx equal to dy. You will first draw these two lines. Once you draw the two lines in each region, so if you notice, this will be your first region and this will be your second region. Because the coefficients are all different, it will not be perfectly symmetric. So in your region one, you will find out what is the equation of a line. You will get not a vertical line, but a slanting line now. And you'll draw it. Similarly, you'll draw the line in all the four regions. And you'll see that you'll be getting a parallelogram. It is not a rectangle or a uh, square. It's a general, more general form format, which is a parallelogram. And getting the coordinates, you know, the concept still remains the same. You know the equation of this line. Try to see where this line and this line, which is your CX equal to DY, where are they intersecting? You can get your X1 comma Y1 coordinate. Similarly, you can find your X2 comma Y2 coordinate. But remember, the length here, you have to use a distance formula because the line is not vertical. It is not just Y1 minus Y2. Here, you have to use a distance formula for the uh, two points, which is root of X1 minus X2, the whole square, plus Y1 minus Y2, the whole square. As I said, it's a bit more complicated in this scenario. And that's the reason why uh, the, the normal exams, except IITJE or engineering level exams, if you leave that out, normal BBA, IPM, DU JAD exams, or even CAT exam, they don't go to this level of questions. And by chance, if it comes, you are meant to leave it in the exam. It's not meant to be done in the exam. Right? So guys, with this, we end our complete theory on modulus. I hope you enjoyed the sessions. And I really hope that these six videos will make you solve modulus in the class without or in the uh, exam without worrying too much or without getting scared. That was the purpose. Thank you guys. See you in my next sessions.